All right. Hello again, everyone. It's Gene with GTV. We're back in episode four. Uh, we have a special guest today with us. It's Coach Tino Iruli with Shiloh High School. Now, anybody who is a high school football fan, uh, this, this is an intro that's – bottom line is Coach Tino doesn't really – need an introduction <laughs> anybody who's familiar with high school football especially in Palm Beach County but uh, we're going to talk a little bit about his career at Palm Beach Central and his first season at Shiloh but in the wake of all that uh, he had five years in his tenure with Palm Beach Central leading the Broncos to three district titles to, to, uh, 2014 17 and 18 and a regional finals appearance against uh, perennial power Deerfield Beach in 2018 actually covered that game and let me tell you that was a postseason thriller that year they went 11 and 2 I believe it uh, set a school record uh, or at least tied was that the correct coach uh, no it was it was a school record okay it was a school record all right and so after an 0 and 3 start they went on a seven game win streak that was uh, a, a year or two before that and then 2018 was their record-breaking year where they lost their season opener to, again, state ra- a state-ranked team like Atlantic and then went on an 11-game win streak. And that's not easily done here in, uh, in South Florida. Then in 2018, they avenged their prior postseason loss to Western, which is a Broward County team, uh, with a 38-0 shutout, which landed them in that regional uh, finals appearance. Well, after all that, building that kind of a, a success story, uh, Coach Tino has relocated to Georgia and is now at the helm at Shiloh High School. Well, as the intro goes on, after uh, 16 years, 16 seasons without a winning record, uh, Coach Tino actually uh, led that team to a 7-3 and record, making a postseason appearance, again, setting more records, but in Georgia. So uh, also nominated for Coach of the Year, uh, I believe uh, – Coach of the Year recipient, another school record, because I don't think there was ever a Shiloh coach that received that, those kind of honors. So let's welcome Coach Tino. Uh, welcome, Coach. Thanks for being with me, and I certainly appreciate that. Always a pleasure, Gene. Thank you. This is awesome. Uh, kind of miss you down here in South Florida <clears throat> last year. Miss you too. <laughs> so take us back to uh, when you first – entered uh, Palm Beach County and you came to, because uh, I think it was, you were in Central Florida, if I'm yep. not mistaken. Uh, you, you come to Palm Beach County, it's South Florida, 8A football. Take us back, uh, what your expectations were, uh, the culture that you were going to establish, and, and how that all panned out. Uh, <laughs> it was actually a very uh, exciting time. I mean, as everyone remembers, probably uh, Jersey Shore was big back then. So when I first got the job, it was a lot of um, – <laughs> stuff going around the blogs about, you know, Jersey Shore comes to Wellington. <laughs> who's his offensive coordinator going to be? It's going to be Snooky and all these things. You know, I just rolled with it. I, I had I had fun with it. I mean. That's good stuff. I think somebody report, you know, did a report, and I was like, look, I'm from Long Island. I'm not even from Jersey, but I'm down here. <laughs> but, no, seriously, it was uh, – at the time, my athletic director was uh, Rob Matella, who was uh, – I love the guy. Phenomenal guy. Great athletic director. Very supportive. And uh, he really helped make the transition go smooth. I mean, you know, Central had a good program before I got there, very successful. Uh, they had won two district titles previous. Uh, the former head coach, Coach Harris, was still in the building. Uh, he was very respectful when I got there. I, you know, we very professional, never had any confrontation in the building, and, and which, you know, it's kind of tough coming into a new program, trying to build that relationship with your players. And having the former head coach still in the building teaching still, uh, it, it, it was a, a good transition that got. Uh, Mr. Edgecombe came in my first year, first season, because I got there in January of 2014. Uh, so that next school year, Mr. Edgecombe was there during my first season. He was a phenomenal man. I mean, I love the guy. Keep in touch with him still. Uh, very supportive and helped make the transition and the support through the five seasons. And what we were able to do really helped us make it possible, along with our athletic director, Ray Atkins, who's there Right, now. right. Was, was there a lot of pressure coming in from, from out of the area? Because it's not uncommon uh, when, a, when a program needs a coach, they, they stay within the county or promote within. Uh, was there any pressure there uh, coming from out of the area? How, how did that you – know- Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, how did that, how did that work out? If it, maybe, you know, was there pressure or was it just kind of a smooth transition? 
I, you know, I don't know. At the time, I was that being that was my first head coaching job. I was so excited and had so much energy and stuff to take over a program. And I, I felt I was, I mean, groomed very, very well by my former head coach, uh, Coach Corey Brinson, who was the head coach at Lake Mineola, who really, truly taught me how to run a high school football program. And I'm, I'm indebted to that guy forever. I love the guy. Still keep in touch with him. But he taught awesome. me so much and how to build a program. I think as, as far as pressure, I, I, I didn't have time to really worry about the pressure because of all the excitement and trying to build a staff and trying to get the relationship with my young men down there. And it, it, everything happened so fast. Right. The pressure started, I guess, building up at the beginning of that first season when we started at 0-3, knowing we had, a, you know, great athletes and the games we lost were very, very close. We weren't getting – we were playing big-time teams too. And they were close. So it was a coaching staff and a coach. You knew we were right there on the cusp. But, <clears throat> excuse me, fans looking in, 0-3, they don't want to – they don't – they see the record, so they want to see better. Right. We knew we were moving in the right direction. So um, I actually called a parent meeting after we went 0-3, and I made a promise to him. I said, look, just support us and stay with us. We're going to do fine. And then we went on a seven-game win streak. Right. So what was it like to achieve that level of success so quickly? I mean, how are you taking that in? What was that like? Take us through that. Well, we, we really worked hard. You know, my – high school teammate that I, you know, grew up with. Reggie Harris was my defense coordinator and assistant head coach. He came down from, from uh, California, actually. He was at Grand High School for 15 years, the AD there. He actually left that job to come help me build Central. And um, having him in my corner and a couple other coaches that were with us that were really just great guys and, and loved the kids and support us, even, you know, our freshman coaches, you know, JB, everybody it was a good feeling to know that we had, we knew we were moving in the right direction and we just had to be patient and we we're building. So we knew that our expectations are always and everyone's expectations is to win a state championship, but we knew we were moving in the right direction based on the way our kids were performing at practice in the games. They never quit. They kept battling. We knew we had something special. Right. Uh, and for sure. Yeah, you absolutely did. So, uh, talk a little bit about that schedule. Uh, right off the bat, you're, 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 you're put into this uh, situation where you're playing tough teams, and then you continued with that, uh, you know, that pattern of just taking on you know, the state's best team. So what was that like, and, and how, does that, how does that benefit uh, any team? I mean, obviously, uh, you know, it, it, with the point system now, we'll get into that, uh, it has an impact on whether or not you make the postseason. Um, it can help you, can hurt you. Um, but talk a little bit about that, you know, with, with building a schedule and whether or not it benefits a team. Well, it definitely benefits a team. I mean, we went uh, – so my first year at Central, we had to play – we were in the last year of that two-year contract. Now. So, you know, we had to play that, that schedule that was already in place. So going into the, my, my second and third year, I had built that schedule where I, I, like, loaded up. I mean, we played American Heritage. We played Vero. We played uh, Blade Central. We played all these big time programs, and you know we we took a little bit of a beating. We had we had graduated thirty six seniors from our from my first year, but we had such again knowing what we had and and building what we had. We knew we were going to have something special, and the reason why we built a heavy non regional schedule is to get these kids ready because really you prepare you don't. Your overall record is great to have the wins and all, but you're playing for state championships. And if you build a, a soft schedule and then you, you go to the first round, you meet a tough team who's, who's been battle-tested already, you're going to get punched in the right. mouth and it's going gonna, it's gonna to backfire on you. So we knew that building our program, we had to build our schedule accordingly, and that's what we did our, our right. second, third year. So – what are some of those uh, memorable moments uh, in that five-year career playing teams like that, like Vero Beach, Heritage, uh, Dwyer, Miami Northwestern, Atlantic? Uh, you know, I mean, you had a, a little bit of a rival going on with Atlantic. Uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I mean, that, yeah. <laughs> you know, that was Bay. a great rivalry because, I mean, you know, TJ's a, a phenomenal – I, I love the guy. I mean, he's – and that was a fun rivalry because he always, he's got great, a great program, tough kids, and 
we felt we were just at that same caliber. We went in that, um, I think it was my, it was 2017, I think, first game of the year. We, we shocked everybody, beat them 14-13. We actually blocked the extra point at the end to win the game. And um, he's just been such a, he's been very supportive, actually. He helped, you know, in, in what, 2018 when we beat Western 38 nothing. They defeated them in the first round. First person I called was TJ Saturday morning. What do you think we got to do to beat, you know, what do you, and he, he, Stand up man he is and a hell of a coach he is. He right. kind of shared everything that he thought they did wrong, what they could have done better, and we took that to heart and that's awesome. Executed a great game plan. Uh, I I I have a recollection, you know, interviewing you after several games and going through the seasons. Um, you actually, I remember, you know, quoting you used to like to be the underdog, like it felt oh, yeah. like the. You guys weren't getting the respect that you deserved. You're you're beating good teams. You're you're competitive with some of these state ranked teams, beating some of them. Yet, uh, but you you were good with it because it kept the boys hungry, right? It kept the players oh, yeah. hungry. Uh, you actually liked being the underdog. No so, question. Absolutely. And look what it does. It lands you in a regional final against a, a team like Deerfield, you know. So and 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 Western too in the playoffs. Uh, another big game. Uh, yep. Talk a little bit about that game, or well, actually the first game. You guys were up, and then uh, it's funny because I, I still have some of the interviews on my phone, and I was listening <laughs> to it the other day, and I have that yep. uh, the uh, I think I have them both on. So I'm listening to them, go, wow, what a great, you know, uh, what a great game. Even the first one and the second one. I mean, you shut them out, thirty-eight nothing. But uh, so that was certainly an exclamation point uh, in the rematch. But the first game was. Uh, it was still a thriller despite the loss. Talk a little bit about that little uh, – that, that matchup and the rematch. Uh, uh, well, we were up 12-0. Uh, and, I mean, we were – had the momentum. We were playing physical and, and – At halftime, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was 12 nothing at halftime. It was 12 nothing going with like seven and a half minutes left in the game. And uh, – That's right. It was, you know – we had some calls that didn't go our way and it, 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 I guess Western took advantage and the momentum slipped and we lost that game 14, 12. And it was uh, something that we tagged that game to build the 2018 season as unfinished business. That's unfinished we business. We, we were, we felt that the game was taken from us and, and that's what we felt as a program in our hearts. I remember. And Western, you know, they beat us. What It is what it is. It's over right. done with. But in our hearts, we felt the game was taken from us. So we had to prepare ourselves to go into every game to have nobody in control of the outcome but ourselves. And that's right. how we that's what we took going into 2018. Right, right. So uh, let's talk about some of the players. I, I know, you know, not getting into the uh, Shiloh uh, program yet, but uh, with five years at Central – you were able to assist a lot of your players to go on and play at the next level. Um, so what, what, what's the feeling when you get to see these players achieve that level of success uh, after high school? And um, do you still keep in touch with any of the players and, and have a continued relationship? Oh, absolutely. I do. I mean, it, well, to answer the first part of the question, you know, as a football coach, you're a father, you're an uncle, you're a big brother, a mentor. You're so many things to these young men, and you love these kids. And, you know, I tell them all the time, I love you. And I'll go into a new program, first day at Shiloh, I told them, look, I love you guys. You're my you're my kids. And, you know, you get some kids looking at you like, what the hell, you, you, how the hell do you love me? I don't think they realize when you take on coaching profession, it's not just about X's and O's. It's about their, you know, them being young men and trying to guide them and mentor them and be there for them. So when these kids gain the success and they achieve their goals, it's just like your own biological child. It's like right. you have so much pride and joy watching them achieve everything they've gained. So it goes a lot deeper than just X's and O's. Oh, yeah. that's, it's yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. So let's get into your transition from Florida to Georgia. All right. So take us through that, how that, uh, how that panned out, um, what it was like making that. It's a big move. You know, I'm going to be going through it, uh, not a, a, as a coach, but uh, when you move out of state, it, it's a big move. So, and then you, you know, we know how big Georgia football is. So take us through uh, your, 
your transition to Shiloh? You know, honestly, <clears throat> Gene, it was almost similar to, uh, to uh, when I made the transition from Central Florida to South Florida. Um, the former head coach was still in the building. He finished out that school year. Uh-huh. Uh, he, he was there, wow. I believe he was there for four years or five years, five years, I think. He was the head coach, and he had a, a great bond with his players. So it, it was um, – it was good. I, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a challenge. However, he was very professional, you know, he, because obviously he cared about his kids, you know, the players and sure. he was supportive. He never, you know, it's more than X's and O's. <laughs> 100%. No, yeah. no doubt. I mean, you know, coach Andrews did the right thing by, you know, I guess keeping those talks with the boys. I mean, the boys accepted me when I got there, uh, they bought in and, and truly the, that was the whole reason for the, the our successful season was that our young men bought into what we as a new staff were bringing to them. And um, it was, it was challenging to a bit and not actually not so much because again, my, my uh, athletic director, uh, coach Wilson is phenomenal. He was a former coach track coach. He won seven state track championships. So he understands what we as coaches need to build a program. My principal, Dr. Dollar, assistant principal, you know, Dr. Johnson and Dr. Frazier, who both actually are from Florida oh, and okay. uh, played high school ball down in Florida. So they understood where I was coming from and knew what was going on and and um, very supportive. I mean, they helped me basically get what I needed to build the program, build my staff. I actually had intentions on bringing my staff up with me from Florida. Unfortunately, Gwinnett County at the time, they didn't let paraprofessionals, if you weren't a certified teacher, you, you couldn't get paid the stipend through the school. Ah, but okay. and now I think they changed some things this year, but I've got a great staff in place this year. I mean, I'm very excited about them. Uh, I, I got two former NFL guys that are on my staff. One was an all pro safety for the Jets. I mean, I'm excited. Oh, wow. about, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Um, but we're, we're um, the transition was almost similar to Central in the fact that the head coach, former head coach was still there, but he, he was, you know, very professional and very supportive too. And, and so the transition was fairly smooth. But again, we had, a, you know, it's tough. I had to build a program, a coaching staff rather. <laughs> Coming up from Florida, I knew no coaches up here. Right. You're bringing up a heck, heck of a resume, but – you know, there's still that, that pressure of, of the unknown. Oh, no and like you said, yeah. Wow. You're only as good as your, your coaching staff. And I had Fair my enough. last couple of years at Central, I had a hell of a staff. I love those guys. For man. sure. Those guys are still keep in touch with them every day. Awesome. Agreed. So you, you go through your first season, you, you, uh, um, and in your bio, you, you, you kind of went through the season. So kind of take us through it. Um, for the viewers, uh, you, you kick off classic, you, you win that, uh, you go through and post uh, a few shutouts. Um, next thing you know, you're, you're seven and three and you're in the postseason, something that, that the school hasn't seen in 16 years. That's almost two decades. That's, that's quite a time span. I mean, that's, that's, that's crazy to, to hear that. So um, do you think you at least met your expectations or did you far exceed them? Uh, take us through that that season uh, briefly on on how you how you work through that. As far as building a program, I felt we we're on track with our expectations because our biggest goal, obviously, we want we want to win a state championship. When I first got the job, um, actually, when I was in the interviewing process, I'll never forget somebody on two four seven sports. They they showcased all the openings and and um, of the the, the schools and and the, you know. 7A, 6A, 5, and they had Shiloh High School, 7A, Gwinnett's worst, uh, the David Pollock years are over. As you know, David Pollock was a three-time All-American at University of Georgia who actually played at Shiloh. So before that, I, so when I read that and I had, I was offered another position, another high school in Georgia, as I was waiting for the decision at Shiloh, when I saw that tweet, I called up Coach Wilson, our athletic director, basically said, look, I I know you still got another interview. This is, I want this job. This is my job. I want it. And I shared with them later why I was so adamant because that, you know, kind of chapped my rear end a little bit. Right. You know, you're talking about that when that's worse, David Pollock would not, now my, you're kicking young men in the mouth by degrading the program that they play for. 
I wanted to take this program over. And that's why I chose Shiloh. I mean, really, it was, it was, it's, it's crazy, but I swear that's why. And I say this all the time, and it was the uh, best choice I made. So what was it like setting more records uh, in another state, in Georgia? You, you set some records down here uh, at Palm Beach Central, and then you land at Shiloh, and you set records there. So uh, what's that got to feel like? As a coach, yeah. and and you know what, as a program too, overall, because obviously it reflects on the program and the school. But uh, personally, what, what's that feel to uh, to you? Uh, I mean, I, and I'm I'm just speaking from the heart as a, as a coach. You don't really think about these things because you're preparing for the game that's in front of you. And I had no idea about these things. The only reason why I knew about these is because after the weeks win, then you know the reporters are contacting you, trying to do a report on the update of the game, and they're letting you right. know about the stuff, but you don't really want to talk about it that much because you don't want the kids to be complacent and feel like they've reached their goal. And which our goal was to win a state championship. Could be a distraction. Oh, 100%. So uh, we did a good job as a staff and and the players. I'm so proud of that group that I had that uh, they really bought in and they were, uh, they didn't even, I tell you, I never forget. We were, uh, I think we were at the time four and oh or five and oh, or maybe six and oh going into the Grayson game. And, so you were unbeaten. I mean, you went through a six-game win streak. Oh, we were six and zero, oh, and actually, we won wow. that, that spring before our, you know, the spring game. We won. Then we won the kickoff classic, and then we won six straight. And the kids, that group of seniors, had only won three games in their three years that they were there. And so they had doubled. One of them had said, "Cool, we doubled the amount of wins in in this season that we've had in the previous three seasons." And I was like, well, no, let's not focus on that. We're not, that's not our goal. Right. And, and what I was so proud of this group is how they, like, they just they kept preparing. And, and I'll never forget one game. Um, matter of fact, it all started back in the spring game when I first got here. We were down 10 nothing going into halftime. And when we went into the locker room, I told the guys, look, I'm proud as hell of you guys. You guys are beating this team's butt up and down the field. We just made a couple mistakes, and I don't think they were expe- – I thought they were expecting me to get in their rear ends and go off and stuff. I brought them in. I looked them in the eyes. I said, you're going to go out there, and you're going to take it to this team, and you're just going to – you're going to die. And they, they went out in 28 to 10, 20. They just – they rolled over. And from that point on, they started to really believe in themselves that, yeah, you know, just because we're down in a game doesn't mean the game's over. Right. They were so lo- – you know, I guess they were used to losing – that they would get, okay, you know what, it is what it is. We'll just fit. They didn't have that mentality, and they just kept battling and batting. I mean, we honestly should have been 8-2 and two this year. We had uh, Newton. We were beating Newton, who's another phenomenal program, and lost that game in a minute and 20. A minute 21, we lost it. Oh, at the end of the game. Oh, man. And we had <laughs> it. it was, we lost 35-28, but we had the game. Or 34-28, to 28, but we had the game – a minute and 20 and we, we lost at the end. So we could have been eight and two, but it is what it is. Could have, should have right, right. beat us, period. Yeah. Well, and the records just come as a result of the, the program being a success and, and, and your ultimate goals of winning a city championship. Cause that's what it's all about, you know, getting into the postseason. So um, it's, it sounds awesome. So let's shift gears a little bit and talk about, since we're talking about, you know, uh, postseason state championships, schedules, uh, the programs, uh, what's it like in Georgia as far as uh, or compared to Florida's point system, this new point system that they have down here? Uh, it's going to, you know, we don't know if I got to believe there's going to be a fall season, but it, there's so, still so many unknowns. And we're entering the third season with this point system. I think there's pros and cons, but how is it in Georgia? Is it similar? What are some of the differences and similarities there as far as how you make the postseason and strength of schedule and all that? Well, in Georgia, the top four teams in the conference make the playoffs. So if you're one through four, you, you're going to make, but you'll get seeded accordingly, basically. So then you'll play your sister conference, uh, who we matched up with was North Gwinnett, obviously. They were the number one seed. And at seven and three, we were the number four seed, believe it or not. Um, so we had a match up with North Gwinnett in the first round. So in Georgia, top four teams make the playoffs for each conference. Florida, it used to be the district and district runner-up. Now it's the district champ and then point system. 
Uh, I like the way Georgia does it because if you're playing in a tough conference, which we were in a very tough conference with, you know, we had Archer, uh, Grayson, who are our two top, and then Newton, who were all playoff team, state championship programs, some of them. They were in our conference. So we fell into that conference. Uh, and now we're in a conference with Buford, who's just won a state championship and has won several state championships. Uh, the Cula, who was like, I believe, 13 and one this year. Uh, they lost to the team that actually won a state championships, Harrison High School. Uh, Harrison, so, that's you know, where uh, Coach Dickman's at. He's a that's it. Yep. Yeah, former Ridge coach. Yep. He, he's the one that uh, eliminated uh, Dekula this year. But, you know, he, that Dekula is a great pro. So we're now we're in a conference with some powerful programs again. So, again, the top four teams will make it. Uh, then you just got to battle from there. So you're basically playing for seeding. Okay, so it is a little different. Oh, yeah. Is it similar to the way it used to I remember it was a district championship and the runner-up in a district. And then you had um, the region. Is right. It, is the region kind of like the conference then uh, compared yeah. to Florida? Yeah. Similar to that? Okay, because now with the point system uh, here in Florida, you can – you know, you can actually face a team out of county in the first first round. Yeah. You know, so. Which it, it, to me is actually better to me. I mean, because I my first year, we played Gardens game number 10. We beat them 24 to 20. Or no, whatever, I whatever, in, in game 10. Then we had to turn around and play them in the first round the following week. Back to back. Yeah, I remember yeah, which that. which was ridiculous because we were going to say, we stood, it was just, it was dumb the way right. it, it should never be, but I think they fixed that now. So that was a big complaint. I mean, <laughs> it's, just, it's tough to beat a team twice. You had to do it consecutive weeks. I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah. Yeah. And they had a good program too. Sure. Anyways. Yeah. Agreed. So what are some of the similarities between high school football having the experience now in Florida that, that you bring to Georgia, what are some of the similarities that you notice and any differences there might be from, you know, from personnel? Uh, I would imagine the talent might be pretty consistent, but administratively uh, some of the uh, similarities and, and what some of the differences might be. Uh, you know, Florida's got phenomenal athletes. Uh, and, and Georgia, when I got up here, I, I come to realize real quick, especially in Gwinnett County, that they've got phenomenal athletes. Uh, I think the biggest, and I'm just from what I've learned in a year being up here, our number one is the support from the county that the county gives you, not not even financially, because it, I'm talking about like the facilities they provide for you, like the field houses. I mean, we have a field house. Like I never forget when I interviewed, I'm walking around laughing, like, oh my God. I mean, I came from a program in South Florida. We were building ourselves into a powerhouse, and our varsity locker room was in the PE locker room. I mean, right. and now I have my own building that I'm responsible for with a varsity locker room and then a separate JV freshman locker room with these big wooden lockers that are, you know, with the shells and everything. I mean, you know, I got a defensive meeting room, an offensive meeting room. Wow. I got, you know, a, a separate – JV has their building. separate locker room. Wow. Oh, Yeah. I have a separate building with a weight room, which is huge. I mean, it's, I think we have 18 power racks in it. It's, I mean, so these are the things that the big differences that you have. Plus, I'm going to be honest with you that the way that they, well, first of all, the teacher's pay is a lot better here and the coaching pay is tremendously better. So I think you see a lot of the very good coaches in Florida because this is their profession and they want to stay right. in it to, to survive. They, they moved to Georgia or Texas or other states that have powerful programs and who take care of their coaches and pay their coaches accordingly for the amount of time we put in. So the, I think the coaches, the, the one thing that you'll see up in Georgia is that some of these programs, these coaches have been here a long, long time, as well as their staffs. And then their, their staffs are getting these head coaching jobs at, at other schools when they open. Florida, you have very you, you do have some you know schools that the head coach has been there a while, and to be honest with you, I, I financially, if I was able to afford it, I would have stayed at Central. I had it. I had a, a, a phenomenal staff. I had a, you know great administration. Uh, the fans were buying in. I just couldn't provide for my family in South Florida. I just couldn't do it anymore. And and it's tough. I mean, 
you know, the, you still number one. You, yes, you do it because you love it, but you also right. still got to provide for your family. You got to put a roof over their head. You got to build for their future. Yeah, so fair enough. I can't stand hearing coaches. It makes me sick when they say, oh, you don't do it for the money. No, you don't really do it for the money. You do it because you love the kids and you love the game. Right. But you also have a family that you have yeah. to provide for. The, the, you know, listen, the money helps. The, the, I mean, the, let's let's be real. The money does help. Uh, and I got to tell you, I like the weather up there, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I'll tell you, Gene, I'll be honest with you. This year, I, my players were kidding with me. You know, the joy, at Shiloh saying, Coach, I bet you uh, never thought it would get this hot because it was ridiculously hot this summer and the beginning of the year. So I was like, man, I thought I left Florida. But. It, now, the good thing was towards, you know, like October, we started getting to play in some cold weather. Right. You got to wear your hoodies and sweatshirts yeah. at the games. And so, the, yeah, it is better. But the beginning of the summer was ridiculous. Yeah. The I heat is short-lived up there. It's short-lived. Um, yeah. you, you got a couple months of, of you know, some, some hot, humid days. But you have a change of seasons, which is what oh, I'm yeah. looking forward to. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. So uh, how are you managing the program through this pandemic? Uh, you know, you guys, I don't think, had a spring season either, right? In Georgia, wow. I think just sports were pretty much canceled all, all the way around. So I think March sixteenth or something like that, we was the last day that we were in school at something like that. Yeah. So your seniors, they don't get to, and I've we've discussed this with some of the other coaches. The seniors don't get to walk across the stage and graduate. They don't get to go to a prom. Um, you know, uh, recruiting might become more difficult. Uh, so. How are you managing this without having, you know, a spring season? And now you have a summer where, you know, in Florida they have the restrictions where uh, players have to kind of do stuff on their own. Uh, you can have, I guess, the, the Google Meets or, or Zoom meetings and stuff like that. Everything is online. Uh, in addition to academics, you know, kids weren't able to go to school. They couldn't go to class. Everything was virtual reality. It was online. So uh, what are you doing as a coach, as a head coach with a new program, handling something that, was really unforeseen that now everybody has to kind of handle. What, what are you guys doing for this? We're just, you know, really we're, uh, <laughs> we have our defensive uh, staff holding Zoom meetings with the defensive players, offensive staff doing the same thing. Uh, our coaching staff will meet through Zoom. Uh, you know, you're on a constant contact with the kids through Twitter and all that stuff. And, right. you know, they, and, and, and one thing I tell you what I'm very, very excited about, and, I can, and it goes back to what I'm saying that we're, I know we're doing things the right way now is these kids are out there busting their butt on their own, working out with the weights, doing this stuff. So it's, the good thing is, is when we get them back on June 8th, because we're allowed to start back with them in the phase one, which is very restricted, but it's still an opportunity for us to see our kids again. <clears throat> uh, we know that these kids haven't just been sitting on their butt for two and a half, three months doing nothing. Right. They've actually been really working hard. And, and the biggest thing – Managing wise is just holding the meetings, you know, getting them mentally prepared for the game as far as understanding the schemes, offensive, defensive. You know, I mean, we really should make no mistakes <laughs> as far as scheme wise because of all the they've had more classroom training and stuff through Zoom than they've probably ever had. But that's the only thing you can do right now. And you got to make best what we can do for now. And that, that's what we're doing. Our, you know, coaches are doing a great job of staying on top of their units and. Right. You know, they're just doing their job as well. Did you bring in the same offense and defense that you had at Central, or did you make adjustments based on personnel and, and talent and ability, or how's that working out as far as uh, your offense and defensive schemes without giving away too many secrets, you know, to maybe opposing teams? <laughs> now, my first – well, this past season I, I ran the defense, you know, because I, I, I didn't have anybody at the time that – I was comfortable with as far and nothing against any of my coach. I just didn't know him well enough yet. So coming in into the spring, I had to implement the defense right off the bat. So we just rolled with that and just, it was our three, four, same thing. I ran a central, you know, heavy blitz, Pat, you know, a heavy blitz type pressure right. defense with a lot of cover zero behind it. We'll disguise roll coverages. So we did a lot of that type of stuff. Um, it, offensive wise, I hired actually a, a good friend of mine who was actually uh a college coach at Albany State, Adam Miller, who used to be at um, Charter uh, Charter School. Char I forgot what it down in South Florida. In Florida, oh yeah. And then he was with uh, FIU as a GA, and then he was at Albany State as their running back coach or quarterback coach. I can't remember, but he actually we hired him 
he got a job in the building as a teacher and he he ran, he was our office coordinator and assistant okay. head coach. He's coming back again. So he ran up, you know, he his offense was very it was very productive, just like our offense is central. Right. He had a great one game. We had the county's leading rusher and Arthur Rogers, who actually uh, signed with Marshall. Nice. Uh, and we had a young man, Vince Goffney, who I think maybe threw for six touchdowns his junior year and ended up throwing for 20-something touchdowns his senior year and only six picks. I mean, the kid did two for over fourteen or 1,500 yards, and he did a hell of a job. He's going to Manchester to play football. Uh, he, he, so, you know, and now Miller's got some young kids that are coming up. I was going to say, who do you have filling those spots now? you got some voids to fill. Well, we got a, a, a sophomore – Actually, a junior and a rising senior who were sophomores and juniors last year at, who were going to run the ball for us, plus another young man that transferred in, phenomenal running back. So although A.J. has some huge shoes to fill, both of these kids, all three of these kids are going to be competitive, and, and they're going to be able to pick up where A.J. left off. Uh, quarterback, we got a couple young quarterbacks who are very athletic, who can run, who can throw, and again, you know, Adam – does a hell of a job with coaching the quarterbacks up. And then, you know, Brian White, who's going to also be working with quarterbacks and receivers. And then my own line coach Burgess uh, did a hell of a job with our offensive line last year. I mean, again, we had the county's leading rusher and it all goes, you know, if you don't have an offensive line, yeah. you got nothing. Yeah, right. Games are won and lost. I said this uh, yesterday. Games are won and lost in the trenches. 100%. For sure. For sure. Uh, so, what can we expect uh, in, in the fall f- from you guys? You know, you've got – there's no question you've got Shiloh back on the Georgia football map for sure. So, uh, I, you guys are probably going to be a target. <laughs> People are going to want to, uh, you know, uh, spoil your uh, – rain on your parade. So, uh, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, hey, right. You're welcome to challenge, right? That's so, w- what are your plans for the fall? I, I know this is going to be a challenging summer to keep the players engaged, but uh, do you have any uh, – Anything special in, in, in place or, or planned for the fall when, when it comes in? Is your schedule set? You have your kickoff classic, yeah. or is that unknown? Yeah, yep. okay. we have our kickoff classic. We're playing actually a team that we played in our second regular season game last year, Discovery. We're playing them in a kickoff classic this year. And then we open up with the school Mountain View, who uh, unfortunately just lost their head football coach to uh, an infection, which is a hell of a guy. Coach Kellogg was a phenomenal coach in the short time I knew him. Uh, which, you know, is a tragedy. My heart goes out to that program and his family, but they just hired a new head coach from uh, who's actually Brookwood's defensive coordinator. And Brookwood's a perennial powerhouse in the state of Georgia. So, you know, that's who we're going to open up with, and they're going to be a tough program, and we'll be ready. I mean, I'm excited. You know, we got – then we're playing uh, – I know you heard of uh, Denmark, who's got, I think, yeah. one of the top quarterbacks in the country there. We're welcoming that. We can't wait to play them. They're only, I think they're only going into their third year, but they're a great program already. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we're playing like, you know, Decula. Okay. Uh, we actually looked at a house Decula that was – we, we looked at a house right behind the school, and it was Denmark. Cause Decula? When I looked at, yeah, no, uh, Denmark. Oh, Denmark, the, yeah. Yeah, I yeah. looked at the aerial map, and I'm like, what school is that? And I looked it up. I'm like, oh, that's Denmark. So, yeah, you can see <laughs> the field and everything. It was, and pro, yeah. it was literally the house was like right behind the school in the field. So, yeah. Yeah, Very nice over there. I'm getting to know that that whole area. Uh, it's still new, but uh, looking forward to it. So you've got your hands full then coming into the uh, summer and then the fall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, it'll be uh, fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, getting up there, and I'm hoping, you know, Gwinnett County, that whole area, Fulton, uh, Fulton, Forsyth, Cobb Gwinnett, County. Cobb County, it's a massive area, but it's all within an hour away, really. So I'm hoping to uh, see some shallow football in the fall. You're always uh, welcome, Gene. Oh, nah, man, I, I, I can't wait. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it and, and getting to know the area and, and see some of these teams uh, battle on these fields and these inside these stadiums that are just incredible. So uh, really looking forward to it. Uh, no question, you put Shiloh back on the map. Uh, you're doing a lot of great things up there. Uh, we look forward to continued success. And looking forward to seeing you uh, in the very near future. And uh, wish you guys all the best. Thank you, Gene. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. 